that's the Leyland Cub, uh, about 1934 model, I think. Uh, it'd be uh, in a paddock at probably Shilcox, I think, uh, at Woolpore, and it'd be going to the Woolpore Mill. And Jack Rose, the driver there. Phone number one. Phone number one. <laughs> Didn't have much trouble to remember. I always say that's why they never had Alzheimer's. <laughs> My grandfather. Same truck. Same truck. Yeah. Three hundred three. Yeah. Same Something place. Like Roughly the same. Yeah. yeah that, that that would. Have, what year was that one? Do you reckon? About nineteen thirty-four, I think. Yeah. A petrol engine. Yep. A bit different to what they have nowadays. Uh, yeah, a little bit. At least it's got brakes and all wheels. It was no good. <laughs> Didn't have brakes and all wheels. <laughs> Didn't. Uh, didn't have the power divider. That one's 304, steam truck. Yeah, steam truck at Woolpaw, at the mill at Woolpaw, Malcolm Road. Drive. Malcolm Road Road. Yeah. Roughly what year? Oh, have to be back around 30. Yeah. It'd be pretty hot in the summertime, wouldn't oh, it? Oh, would they? What? <laughs> <laughs> you can nearly see how black he is there yeah. from the And all big logs. Yep. Something great logs. Yeah, that was an that's international. Mill, that's in 306. Yeah, that's at the uh, Woolpore Mill. It's, uh, I think it's a C35 International. Got the winch on the back to load itself with. Yeah. How many people would work at the mill? Probably about 12, 14. That's in the middle, and then you'd have fallers. Oh, and then you'd and, have fallers and yep. the haulers and things, yeah. So you'd probably have at least 20 people working for them. Oh, yes, would have been mill. around with yep. that mill, yeah. And that's before you start selling timber. That's right, Ned. Did they have a struggle through the Depression years, Ted? Uh, it didn't seem to be, like it was before my time, but it didn't seem, it seemed as if my grandfather did very well during the Depression, I thought. When I look back on it, he uh, he came. He always drove a Buick motor car, and you know, for what it was in those days, he always had everything that he needed. I think and I don't exactly know what they actually cut during the Depression years. A lot of what was cut at that mill were uh, paving blocks for the Melbourne uh, streets. Put them in the streets, but he, he he did seem to come out of the the 30s pretty well. Looks like two trucks. There's the Lyle on there, and I can't see one what the other one, one, one the is. There. The other one is probably be the inter that C35 yeah. International, I think. Yeah, all, all the logs and that, would they come off private land? Or? Yes, off private land yep. at that stage, yes. So it wasn't Forest Commission's no. no. They did get some later in the forest, but that's the International again. Yep. With the, and I think that's Malcolm Row again there. Yeah. That's uh, well. That's definitely in the paddock of Shilcox. Yep, 309. Uh, because you can see the mountain in the background. Yep. And they were pulling him up with a cable. Pulling him up with a cable. Yeah. Yep. So you have two skids down the yep. side. Two skids and the two cables around yep. him, and yep. a single cable onto the two. Yep. That's a massive log. That one. Yeah. He's the I'm not sure who the people are. An old steam truck, well, the, the lady can't reach to the top of the log even. That's right, I think that's Ella Row, my auntie. Mm -hmm. But I'm not too, <coughs> too sure who the two people would be. Probably one would be Melbourne, because he used to drive the steam truck a fair bit. Right. And Malcolm, he was in the saw mill all his life? Yes. Yeah. I think and the other one may have been my father with him there. Right. Yeah, that's that's in the uh, <coughs> station yard at Crowlands. You know, we had on the Navarre line. Yep. My father built that crane. And it's built out of everything. Yep. <laughs> built it off an old log jigger. And that's the Leyland was sort of commissioned onto that one. Well, I was probably about uh, I was in the second grade at Crowland School, so. Or would I have been 
the six or seven. Yep. Yeah. Those logs went to uh, Burwood Timber Mills in Melbourne and they put them on the train. Yep. Mainly came off Woodland Station. When the, when the big rail strike was on what the, that in about 1950, that was, uh, they got road trucks into Carlton. They were loading there in the railway station yard. See the railway line in the yeah, front there? Yeah, And the, the cleats going up the, the boom. Yeah, that was to climb up there to squeeze the pulleys. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you'd love it now. Yeah, wouldn't, wouldn't they? <laughs> They warn us from Dimboola, I think. Yeah, they the were. trucks. Yeah. It's, a, it's a load on the train. Yep. Nowadays, you would have picked them up with an excavator and yeah, sat them in there as good as gold. Sat them in there, no trouble. Big difference, isn't it? That's right. Yeah, that's the one my great grandfather was killed in. The, mm -hmm. in the tree fell. Yeah, and that's out in the uh, Bullhorn in the Victoria Valley. And uh, there's my father and Norman Myers. and myself and just on the other side be my brother Bill. Yeah. And they're just trying to put a track back on obviously. Yeah. That's in stringy country Bill. In the stringy it? country yeah. up there, yeah. yes. Yeah. That's at the Woolpool Mill. Two trucks there. Yeah. The one on the other side will be a Chev Maple Leaf. Uh, it's got a new freighter jinker on it. My father bought the whole outfit new. The one on this side is a loose lens chef. Roughly what year again, Ted? Uh, around 1949, I think the chef was new. It was a 49 one. What powered the mill, Ted? Uh, steam at Woolpaw. I forget what it was now. It was a 16 horse engine, but I can't remember the make of it for sure. Yeah, that's the old crane over there. That's a crane, isn't it? Well, the, the oh, old right one here, over yeah. the back, and that's a crane. That's James and Gork is actually restoring one of those. Is he? Mm, out there, it's um, they were an Air Force glue track machine, which was used for towing aeroplanes back on the tarmac during the war and lifting the uh, engines in and out of the aeroplanes. And they, and they used, used that for loading logs. Loading and logs, yeah. Yep. At rubber tracks. Three, two, three. Not sure, must be me. <laughs> Race car driver. <laughs> yeah, it'd have to be me. <laughs> That's my father. It'd be me in the pram. What sort of ute? Chev. Chev. He had a old 37 Chev, I think it was. That would have been fairly new at that time? It would have been, yes. Oh, when I say fairly new, because the prams there, I must have been still in the prams. So yeah. Yep. I was born in 39. Yeah, that's definitely me at Balmoral. 31. Outside yeah, me, Auntie just had a little lolly shop there. That, that's the old baker shop at Balmoral in the background. It's still there. So you went to school in Balmoral? No, I didn't. No, my, my grandparents, mum's mother and father lived in Balmoral. Right. We used to go there on weekends. Yep, yep. So you went to school here in, in Hamilton? Or? No, Morella. Morella. Oh, Morella, and yeah. then I went to school in Landsborough and Crowlands when my father was doing that work up there. Okay. I started high school in Hamilton. Who? You weren't there at Crowlands for very long, you? Not a long time, no. No. That's, uh, well, well, all our family, I think it's the, the, uh, the Jack Rose kids. And, uh, me and my brother. That's in uh, Rogers Yard at Balmoral, in Greg and Jack Rogers Yard at Balmoral. Old Blitz, is it? The old Blitz, yeah. yeah. Still got it, I think. They have. They have. <laughs> I think Greg's still got it up there. I think that'd be me and my dog and Gavin on the far left. And I think uh, Alison Mitchell <coughs> is the girl, and I think that'd be my brother Bill. Front there. Yeah, it wasn't very hard to tell what you were going to do for a living. No, three, you're probably three, right. three, nine. You're probably right about that. <laughs> you're probably right. Ted playing with the truck. Do you remember the time, Ted, when the photo was taken? Not really, but I remember having that as I made that.
crying thing you see, same as my father made. Yeah, yeah. Laid logs. Yeah. <laughs> Work in the logging industry. Yeah, it's a D40 International, yeah. taken at, yeah, at the mill at Woolpore. The people, I'm not sure, I think, uh, I think the be me and my brother, and I reckon it's my grandfather and Nana, my, mo my mother's parents, and my brother Bill on the trike, it'd be me on the bike, and that's my father yeah. at the door of the truck. And that's at Woolpore? At Woolpore, yeah. yeah. So Marge Todd's family, they come from Woolpore too? Yeah, so they? the short box from Woolpore. That's my brother Bill, he's an old newt. Making you a little No, it wasn't, wasn't brand it? new, no, it was second hand. She's a pretty good nick. Yeah, she was a pretty good order. No, she wasn't brand new. If Jay. Yeah, where's that one, Ted? That's a saw mill. That's at Woolpore. Yep. After the 44 fires, I think, or 45 or something. No, 46 was the fires. Well, yeah, I don't yep. a big fire anyway. They had to put up tanks, high tanks. All the mills had to have those high tanks. That's putting the high tank up. And that's the crane that they yeah, put they put a, with. Yeah, they got an extra long pole out of the bush to, and they anchored it down at the bottom, you see, and mm. then they hooked onto that to get the height because the old crane didn't have enough height to get it high enough. Oh, they're ingenious people. Well, they had, 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 <coughs> had to be. There's no other way of getting yeah, it up there. That's right. Yeah. Not something you had to think about things a bit. <laughs> yeah, had to be. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, putting up the tank stand. And that, that was mainly for fires. That uh, for fires, yeah, up. yeah, that was just for a fire. Well, what sort of pump would you have to get the water up there? Well, I don't know, they would have pumped it. There was a dam down below the mill. Uh, that's the old Leesland chief hooked onto the crane for some reason. The Leyland must have broke down, as usual, I'd say. <laughs> and uh, it, uh, yeah, they would have had a pump from from down at the dam. Yeah. It looks like that. It's about three different yeah, turnouts. Turnouts, yes. The Leyland's on it now because it must have been important, so they put the Leyland on. <laughs> must have come back into vogue. I was just saying, now you'd have an excavator and you just pick oh, it up yeah, and you'd pick lift it up straight up. Somehow there, or another, they'd get, well, they'd get Ron Anger out there with his big crane and swing it on. <laughs> when I, I actually went through that bridge coming out of the Billy Wing, it's just below Glen Isla Homestead. And, uh, and you've got um, Fred Hornby up here. You've got Malcolm Rowe there, Gavin Rowe and me. Just too heavy. Yeah, she was just a bit heavy for the <laughs> old bridge she crunched. We just a lot of a lot of contemplation of how we're gonna get her out. <laughs> Well, some of the logs that they would have carted out of the bush then must have been massive logs. Oh, there's some big stuff, yeah. Where's that one? That's the mill at Woolpore. That's the sawmill. Yeah, the yeah. sawmill at Woolpore. And the old truck here would be for carting yeah, sawdust. Yeah, probably the sawdust and waste away. away. Yeah. Well, they used to have a horse there when I was a kid. I don't remember that, what that truck was doing, but the, might have been a bit after the horse. They had a horse, the old patch used to go up the sawdust away. He did know what he did, doing pretty well. Yes, he, he did. Stand there all day, tight, look out the fill. Have you any idea how many super people would be in some of those real big blocks? Oh, yeah, I reckon there'd be, uh, you know, there'd be around 4,000, 4,000 super in those real big ones, and some of the smaller ones would be a lot less. But... He also had the... Service station. Service station, yep. That'd be, uh, uh, that would be before, before 1958. Because there was a little shop put on the side there, you might remember. Right. And that went on about 1958. And that was the 55 Ford of my father's and the 52 Chef of my uncle Malcolm's in the doorway. Out where walkers are now. Yeah, where the mitre tin is. What's the biggest one you've ever cut down? Oh, the biggest one we ever handled, I think, was that it was out in the mountains here in Victoria Valley. It had uh, 
8,800 super feet in him. He was 80 foot long. We had to cut him in half. 80 foot long? Yeah. And we've got quite a lot of big logs up there. That they were hardwood, of course. And, and to load them, you, you still load them the same way with a couple of spars up the side and pulled them up? Yeah, we'd, we would have push loaded those. Yep, we yep. had the dozer by then. Yep, yep. There was no dozers around when those old lailands and that were about. <coughs> that's... That's 463, this one. Yeah. That's a massive log too. Yeah, he'd have 4,000 feet in him. Yep. And whose sinker was that? My Uncle Archie, I think. Right. Arch Manning. Rough year. Oh, it looks like Woolpore. So they went to Woolpore in 1929, I think. Mm -hmm. So possibly after that, before the motor trucks. Yes, that's at Woolpore again, in the, in the mill yard at Woolpore. Malcolm Rowe in the International. Three big logs on it. Yep. Getting a bit, <coughs> a bit more modern stuff. Oh. oh, yes, that's uh, oh, just my D4 we had at Mount Napier. We we're going to mount a crane on it just to do small wood. But that, that wasn't for big logs you No, had no, it wouldn't have. No, that was just for small rubbish out at Mount Napier we had to get. So with the big logs you would have rolled them up on a ramp? That's right, yeah. Pushed them up. By then we were push loading, yeah. Uh, <coughs> that's just a Volvo loader going over to Mount Gambia. When you say push loading, did you, you push them up with the dozer, did you? Yes, you built a, a ramp up. They put down a bed log and then they put two sort of uh, smaller logs on top of that so it was the same height as your truck, as your bolsters. And then they just got behind them with the dozer and pushed them on. That was how that went. That's just down in the Anya Forest. That one? Yeah. Back, back the stringy bark. Back in the stringy bark, yep. Yeah. So those days you would have picked them up with a loader and yeah, put them back that on. Yeah, loader and put them on. That'd be a heck of a lot quicker. Oh, it was a marvellous invention. That's in the mill yard here at Hamilton. Just a load of waste going you know, to Buckish Marsh. Now, when, when you got the mill, what year did you buy the mill? In Hamilton here? Yeah. Around about 1966, I think, I put that mill there. And you bought it from? Well, various. The first one was from uh, Norman Moore, a drum ball, and that was a small mill, and we just started with that there. Then me, because the mill, the other mill at Hamilton was where Donahue's are, the original one that came from Walpole. Uh, but then that closed down because they were running out of timber in the mountains. And uh, then we got that one down here. Then after that we took over a number, I think, Les Mays and Red J. Bryant at Milltown. Milltown yep. came here. And that sort of got, went from there. And then we sold that in 1974. So you mainly bought the rights for the, the timber? The timber, yeah. Throughout and the set the mill up here. Yep. Yeah. That's just a load of sawn and a load of waste going to Buckish Marsh and the log truck there. That's in the Hamilton Mill. Yeah. Well, the main reason the mills end up closing down completely was just because you run out of logs, or...? Well, they said we did. Yep. Yeah. And do you believe that? No. You don't. Yeah. There's still, still a lot of timber that could be oh, harvested. Oh, yes. Oh, well, the way they went about it, well, you wouldn't have because they just decided to clear fall it. Well, yep. <laughs> our old Dick Aldridge would have turned in his grave if he'd have known. Yeah. Yeah, I, can, I remember like the, the old man, he worked in the bush all his life and um, they would have been absolutely disgusted oh, the way that they, they worked the bush. The way they did it in the, the finish late, was, later years. Was, I wasn't there even, I, I couldn't put it, I, I just left. Yep walked away from it, couldn't, well, it was just, you could see it was going to end, yeah, yeah. but the way Dick and them ran it, it would never end, no. because it had been that way for a hundred years. Well, would you would you have known old Bob Riley and them from Oh, Dickie, yeah, knew Bob, Bob and well. Johnny Holmes yeah, and those sort of blokes. Yeah, knew all those fellows well, yeah. yeah. They worked in the bush all their life. Yeah, the way they ran it, it would have gone forever, yeah. the way these other people. 501. Yeah, that's at uh, Tour and Gabby on the Murray. We had a block up there, Gavin and Malcolm and I, we had a, had a lot of timber on it. And 
So that was just private land. You yeah, do, private do what land. you like with it. it. Yeah, we bought it ourselves. We could do what we liked with that. Whereas nowadays, if you, you oh, had no private problem. land, yeah. you still can't do it. You still don't can't. own the trees or anything to do no, with you it. You still can't do it. So. No. No, that was that's why we bought that block. It was, it was, had a lot of beans, you know, right down into the. All the beans were full of real nice red gum. No, right on the river. Right on the river, yeah. And the block had the uh, Durumbury weir was between the two blocks. We had two two blocks. Durumbury weir. We had high water on one side and low water on the other. I better remember to yell out. <laughs> That's at the same place, same log, I think, at Turin Gabby. Yeah. Yeah. Fairly big log, some of them had a bit of rot up there. Yeah, up yeah, there were a bit of, bit of rot in it, but yeah. a lot of nice timber. A lot there. of timber around mm. it, yeah. yeah. that's 507. Yeah, that's a 404 timber jack that I had. That's uh, George Thomas, I think, and myself. So that you would have used for loading stuff? Uh, Sneaking. You snig them out with that, yeah, but would you load out. them with that as well? No, or not? no, we didn't load with I that. you might have pushed them up on the ramp. No, I had the loader by then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I had the, uh, that's it. Oh, well, yeah, it's still there opposite the mill. Yeah. Out here. Yeah, back in the early days, of course, they used to burn all the sawdust. Everything was burnt, that's right. Which is one reason why there's a lot of fires around the sawmills. That's right. <laughs> they burnt, burnt everything, the waste, the sawdust, the... Later years, used to cart all that stuff where to Melbourne or Baggish Marsh. There was for a start. There was loads of it there at Baggish Marsh. That was built to cart the sawdust to Mount Gambia, <coughs> where they burnt that in the etzer at Mount Gambia. We carted to Baggish Marsh until midway got going at Geelong, and then we put the chipper in and used to cart the chips there. But the same with the thing with the bark and everything else. In later years, they they salvaged the, most of that. Everything, yeah, yep. everything was nothing salvaged. Was nothing, nothing was wasted. No, the whole lot was, but uh, yeah, walk, Walkers built that. The other thing I remember was the old man and then when they were falling in the bush and if they were cutting posts and stuff, when they finished, um, all the, the tree heads and that sort of thing, they used to get burnt. Yeah, old Dick and old Bob Riley, they went round every year, burnt all the heads first thing, you know, as soon as they could burn. That was what they did, they went round, put a fire through. Well, Give it something to bur something to grow off, you know. Yep. It was yep. better. Wouldn't uh, that also reduce a fair bit of the oh, well, the burden in, in the bush? That was the idea of it all. The summer fires. Uh, it did. Yep. I don't know exactly who that is. It's in the, it's, it's up right. in Victoria Valley somewhere. Margaret, do you remember this one? Did Glenn come and tell us something about it, didn't he? What is that, an auto-logger, is it? It's an auto-logger. Yeah. Well, that's my father. Horace Beveridge. Horace Beveridge, Orm Beveridge, and a fella called Lionel Tooley. Yeah. But, uh, well, there again, they would have cut through a fair, fair lump of log. Not like oh, a yes. So, no. <laughs> <laughs> a fairly long bar on it. Yeah, they would cut through something seven or eight feet through. Yeah. The Dunkel Mill. With my mother and Mac Four. MacArthur. Yes, I don't know who that is. Like, oh. The old tractor on the yeah, yeah. on the ute on on, on Sid That's Sid Fields truck. Sid Fields truck. It's in Victoria Valley. It's a fair it's a fair load, isn't it? Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> Whose tractor was that? I've got I don't it here know. somewhere, but I don't know. Off the top of my head. You don't know what sort of truck it would be, or roughly the year. It was a Ford. I'm pretty sure it was a Ford. Wooden spoke wheels, but look at it. Yeah, twenty. 28 model, I think. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's at Maranatra again, my father yeah. up on top of the high stack. Yeah. Horace Berry. Oh, yes, that's Point the old Point Bridge, yeah. And some of the old bridges would have been battling to cart the, oh, the yes. loads to it without <coughs> trying to put over them. Father Horace Beveridge with his Amal car. That's a race model. Yeah. He bought that from Bert McIntyre for ten pounds, and he sold it back to him for ten pounds. <laughs> he did all right. Yeah, 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 yeah I had, had, had it for a few years. Uh, I think that that's clearing your father's block at Mirror Yeah, Salt, Salt Marsh, Salt Marsh from Ballarat. Two D twenty four, I think.
when when you look back on it, Ted, if they if they kept the Forest Commission going, like, We'd they, all like still, they had before, yeah. you'd still be cutting still hard be cutting down there. The same as we did for hundred years. You see that that mill town mill was there for over a hundred years. Yeah. When we actually dismantled it and bought it here, but um, prices that had that there for that they started it, I believe. <coughs> Oh no, the, the bush was quite, well they ran it properly, those older fellas had been there all their life and they knew knew what to take out and what to leave. And, and, the, and the same as far as fires go because... Oh that's right, well you didn't get a big fire. No, it only run from one burn to the other and stopped. That's right. They had, those days it was, uh, I always remember Dick saying that they were in a terrible lot of trouble if they had fire more than a thousand acres because they should have had their burning done. Yep. If they got a fire more than a thousand acres, so a lot of paperwork. Yeah, whereas nowadays, if it, if it gets going, it just keeps going. It just keeps going, because no one ever burns. Yeah. They had all their tracks open. Now I've never seen anyone opening a track for the last 30 years since Dick and Ted used to go around after the winter, you know, October, November, and they'd open every track, they had their chainsaw with them and all the windfalls that had blown over the tracks during them, so as that no one could get trapped in there, yep. you know, like, like those tra tracks all went somewhere and uh, <coughs> they'd go around and open every track that's, come on Ted, we've got to get over to Bessie Bill and open up some tracks there. Mm -hmm. like, I can remember my old man saying that in, when he was a kid in Digby, he said, on a stinking hot day, hot north wind blowing, middle of summer, yeah. and you look out to the west of Digby, there'd be fires going up everywhere. Yeah. Because some of the old fellows would go out there and they'd ride around the bush on a horse and just let flick, a bit go. flick matches out. Yeah, let a bit go. Because they just let a burn go yeah. and, and a bit of feed for the sheep. Because they had well. stock running in the, in the bush. And it'd only go from one burn to the other and stop. That's right, it'll only go. And that was all very well managed under the old Forest Commission. Uh, we used to argue with Dick all the time, but you know that was just <laughs> that's just the way it was. But in actual fact, further I look back on it, the more I see what a wonderful job that those yeah. Dick and Bob and those fellas yeah. did it. Yeah. And Tim Hodgins down the other end, marvellous job they did at that forest. They always had some good timber for you. It didn't matter if we ever got a. You know, we'd be saying, we want, yeah, what about that one there, Dick? Can't we have him? And, uh, no, 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 you, you bring me an order for the right tilt of timber and you can have him, you know, you get, if you get the right order. They always had logs that if you got the right order, they could find you a log to cut it. I remember the old fella told me one time with, with Bob Riley, he used to have an old splitting gun. Oh, yeah. Just belt him in the end of the, the log and yeah. just mark the log and black powder and let it go. Yeah. He had it all set up ready to go and he could see Bob coming down through the bush so he thought, ah, I'll have it gone by the time he comes down here. So he let it go and he yeah. said, he looked up and he said he's hiding behind a tree. He said, and here's old Bob, he's just sunk to his knees in the bush, he thought he'd been shot. <laughs> <laughs> she she would have given him a fright. <laughs> would, have, would have stirred him up. Yeah. It seemed to me at the time that they tried to manage the whole of Victorian forests the same way, and you just can't. This Haywood forest here is unique uh, in the quality of timber that comes out of it, and uh, a couple of instances of that when we had the mill, and, uh, and Jeff Dickerson, when he was building here, he was building commission houses all over the state, and he used to get quite a bit of timber, mainly from Porters at Hotspur, and then later on a bit at Hamilton here, and uh, for the timber that had to go up into around Murbeen and in the Mildura area there, uh, he always had to have Haywood timber because it was the only stable timber. The stuff he got out of Gippsland was not stable enough. Uh, it's very stable timber, this. And you can't treat it the same as Gippsland stuff will grow like blue gum, you know, but this timber down here doesn't grow reasonably quick. Like old Dick and I used to have trees measured down there do them every year and they'd put on an inch and a half around them every year, and years like, and years. There again I can remember Archie when he was forming posts and, and, and that sort of thing, you know, cutting posts in the bush. He hated going to Hotspur. Yeah. 
because down there he said it was bloody gum and it was rubbish, didn't yeah. like it. <laughs> yeah, well, it wasn't stringy. It wasn't stringy, no, yeah. it was a lot of... It was gum, a lot of sap wood in it. A lot of sap wood in it. Didn't like it at all. No. But the, uh, yeah, the timber from uh, here is very good. We used to supply our droppers to uh, Officer, I uh, forget the name of the crowd there, and used to treat them and they they were getting droppers from all over southeastern Australia into their treatment works, coppers it was, coppers. And they rang up here once and they wanted a, it was a big order, I think there was 12 uh, loads in it of sawn uh, of 12 by 2 uh, about oh, I think they were 16 footers and uh, my uncle was from the mill he just said oh no the logs out here don't tend themselves to 12 by 2 you know our supply wouldn't and they, he said oh well look if you possibly can do it don't worry about the price because this has got to go to a pipeline in Bougainville and Yours is the most stable timber that we get in here from all the, all the timbers that we get. So anyway, we got on to, had a talk to old Dick and Dick managed to find us enough trees to actually cut it. And so well, the, these photos, Ted, are, are some that come from Ted and Vince Davies. Oh, yeah, Ted Davies. Yes. <coughs> yep. Um, that one in particular, yeah. 300. It, It'd be easy to lay, you only got a back <laughs> under him. Yeah, now looking at that... It doesn't look as though they had a scarf in it. It looks like he'd been cut off. It looks like he went straight through. Yep. Now, would that be that'd be a bit unusual, wouldn't it? Uh, not really. When the uh, order loggers got going, okay, they'd it's a leany tree. They'd come in from the underside, and instead of having to mess around because those days they usually put the scarf in with the axe mm. so instead of doing that they just set the saw in on the side he was going to fall keep it going through until they and they'd wedge him up keep keep a wedge in there they got the saw through to about you know just a little bit holding at the back pull the saw out as long as the wedges were holding it and then two or three hits with the axe at the back and over he'd let, go let him go yeah, yeah let him go yeah. if it, they still had to scarf every tree that was straight up, you know, yep. but that sort of tree. Where their sawmill was at uh, Gringy Galgana. Was it? Yeah. Ah, oh, yes. That's where they had it. I'd, I've and heard of the Gringy Mill, but I didn't yeah. know that was before me. Yes. Well, some of these, uh, all, all their logging was done with the, um, the cartage was done with the horse teams. Horses, yep. Um, massive breed, young Yeah, he really were. He'd have the best part of 4,000 feet in him. Yep, yep. But that must have gone for quite a few years, and then later on they went back down to um, near Marino. Yeah, where they were there at the finish yep. here. Yes, yeah, so that'd be one of these. Huge logs. Yep. And they tell me that when they had rubber tyres on the jinkers, they could do with at least two less horses pulling it. Oh, could they, when they got the rubber yeah, tyres, yeah, yes. Yeah. I'd because before that they had the old, the old well, wheel, wooden the block wheels, wheels yep. and then the... They put a steel band around them and yep. ride it later in years. Yeah, so. These are some more of the, yeah. the mill. There. That'd be the mill at Woolpore, I think, would it? Or was that no, Davies? Well, or? I think that. They're all about the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's Grinchy Galgana. Is it? Yeah. Because they're all on a yeah. on a hill. and Sim Similar sort of things. And they all relied on the gravity feed. Yep. Yeah. Can you just explain that a bit, Ted? Well, uh, the gravity, I'm always saying this last mill at Hamilton here that was put in, my old uncle put it in, Malcolm, and he built it then on the wrong side. It should have been built up on the high ground, but he built it down on the low ground because always sawmills had to be, your logs came in the top and you rolled them down into the mill and then it was still downhill to the next bench and then it was downhill the timber to go out and it was what I call the gravity feed system because you know, and they stacked the timber and they all had a on a slope. They always the mill on a flat ground was too hard to work. But uh, now these ones here come from um, Carmen's. Oh yeah, Carmen's were yeah. evidently at, uh, around Cavendish area. They, they were, yeah, yeah, before me. Yeah, yeah long before. I don't remember them.
that one there would have to be back about 1930. Um, yeah, at least. It was their camp in the bush, yep. and they've got everything in it. Like it's got the... Yeah, they have everything. <laughs> they've just got a tent, pretty rough sort of a setup with the old truck in the background. Yep. Um, wooden wheels on it. Yep. Um, incredible photos and absolute massive logs. But they've got the sheep hanging up in the tree... Oh, yeah, there he is. <laughs> well, that's, that's how they would have lived yeah, there, that's there how they'd for lived six there. and a half days a week. Yeah, that's how they would have lived there. Yep, and he sort of had half a day at home and, and, or Sunday at home and that was it. Um, the rest of the time they'd been in the bush. Oh, that'd be one of theirs too, yep, would it? with an auto logger, yep. Yeah, getting him down. Cutting him down. That's yeah. another one of theirs, I reckon. To get that up on top of a truck would take a lot of doing because you've got the diameter in the front and the back of that log. Yep. Is that big a difference? How the hell would you get that up? Well, you had a your roll-up ropes, as they call them, yep. were different lengths. Oh, right. So I said that kept it reasonably... Uh, my father used to make his roll-up ropes and, because they had to splice the end in them, you know, they had two ends... Uh, and that, um, that the idea of that was, uh, yeah, so it's that one Comes end, up even, yeah. It came up reasonably even. Yep. Yep. Well, they reckon the, the old fellows originally, with the, the bullock teams and the horse teams, they reckon the, the bullocks were a lot better to load the, the jinkers with than the horses. Oh, yeah. Because a bullock, they could pull it up very slowly. Slow. And they could get yep. him up the top and they could stop him. Yep. Whereas the horses, sometimes they'd pull them straight over yeah, the other side. straight yeah. over, yeah. Yeah. To, yeah. yeah. The, the bullocks were the thing to load with, yeah. they tell me. Yeah. Now there's one with the log on top of the stump. Yep, come jump back on the stump. Now, I've, I've heard that with one like that, what they used to do was to put a greasy plate in. Oh, they'd yeah. They'd put their scarf in, they'd put a gre greasy plate in, and then when the tree started to tip... Yep. He'd slide it's back on the stump and he'd up end there. up on top of the stump so that they He's didn't up have there to ready to load. Exactly. But how many people would you kill doing that? Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the joke. You'd, and you'd, run them you started to go. Oh, oh, oh. You'd, you'd have to keep well clear. <laughs> you'd be very risky, yes, I think. Yes, you'd be risky, yeah. all right. Because um, it'd be quick. On, I, I didn't know that. I hadn't been told that. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, well, I've heard that from a couple of old bushies. Yeah, I hadn't been told that. That old machine there, 31, that's Jeez, that's an old machine. Isn't it? That wouldn't have had brakes on the, the jig no, at all. No, they nothing. wouldn't have had them anyway. Um, I doubt he'd even have it on the front axle. No, they wouldn't have them anyway. <laughs> yeah. And there's a big one just going. Yeah, that, was, that was a quick photo for those days, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah, because uh, it didn't take them long to hit the ground. Uh, it was but the, that one there is is the um, the old sawmill down at um, having a blank mill town. Oh yes, and they had a place a shop there where they used to sell timber and stuff oh, as well yes, at, the... at the sawmill. Yeah. Yes, yeah, and then later on they had one in Hamilton. It was the oldest sawmill site in, in Victoria, yep. Mill Town. Yep. Well, old, old Ted Davies and them, they'd have been in the bush for a, virtually all their life, wouldn't all they? All their life, yep. yes. Because yep. they had the, the sawmill up at Picking and it got burnt down in the finish. Oh, yeah, but that... Who ended up buying it in the finish? Don't know. Don't know. Because it was sold and... Um, for all that big one, they'd go up on the boards to do that. Yep. Like yeah, that. there they are on the board, <laughs> yeah. I was just yeah. talking to Murray Tealy up at Goldsmith on uh, <coughs> on Saturday there. He was uh, talking about he, some big tree up there in King Lake. They were falling one Saturday and he, he was up four boards, he said. So I don't know. Uh, four boards? Four boards, yeah. He said, I was up four boards on him. And mm -hmm. He said, now those, of course, you just fall it at the bottom and long butt it in, yeah. get rid of the spurs, mainly to get rid of the big spurry bits. Now that's a good one. That's that's carting the stringy bark out of the bush. Yeah, carting the bark yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. I wonder what they did with that. That was for housing. 
Really? They used to use it for, for oh, some should... of the early huts. Did they? They built out of that. Yeah, and <laughs> it's funny because the old man used to he, he used to do this sort of stuff. Um, yeah. We always used that for the chook house roof and the oh yeah, you'd the, use the, the bark. dairy. Yeah. And what you used to do, you'd cut the bark off like that, peel yep. it off, and then you'd open it up, spread it out as far as you could, put a couple of sticks in it to yep. hold it find a couple of tussocks that were, were growing fairly close together and you'd light them up and you'd lay that on top of it and as it got hot it'd open up oh, and it'd go right yes, out yeah. flat flatten it out lay that on a couple of posts put another couple of posts on top of it next morning you've got a sheet of bark ready to go on the roof of the shed oh there you go and that'd last for probably 30 years oh yeah it would the bark last a long time but in some <coughs> of the old houses and that like they, that's what they did for the early housing oh. they actually put bark put on, bark on the roof yeah, we've got uh, one photo of the, the Grange Inn. Yep. And the Grange Inn is all stringy bark, the stringy whole Stringy bark, it. is yeah, it? Yeah, and really? it's a beauty, about 1859. Yeah. Really? So just oh. a, a different way of using the Well, yeah, if using the bark. Yeah. 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 